Hello folks and welcome back to another Wise Game video. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at Shadowlands pre-patch. We're going to be looking at what to expect, the changes, and new implements added to the game. At the date that I'm making this video, which is 9-26-2020, there still hasn't been a definite date yet posted by Blizzard of when the pre-patch is actually going to release. But going by assumption, I know the past expansions, usually pre-patch is released about a month before the actual retail game went live. And the retail game for Shadowlands releases between the 26th and the 27th of October 2020. Meaning that the pre-patch could be coming out very soon now. The information I'll be sharing in today's video is directly from Blizzard's website which I will leave a link for in the description panel of today's video. So if you want to go and read the whole article. So with all that being said, let's get started with the Shadowlands pre-patch implements changes and additions. So first on our list is going to be character boost changes. This is probably the biggest change when it comes to Shadowlands pre-patch. So when the pre-patch actually gets added to the game, this will take place. So you will no longer be level 120 on your level 120 characters as you have been in Battle for Azeroth. So for your level 120 character, they will be reduced to level 50 after the pre-expansion patch. If you have a level 110 character, they will be reduced to the level of 48 after the pre-expansion patch. Now what we're looking at right here is a table or a chart that they posted on the page that I provided the link for in the description panel of today's video. This is not the full chart though, the chart's a lot bigger on the page and it breaks down each level bracket of what they're going to be squished to once the pre-patch goes live. Now for all this to make sense and take place, of course any items and stats will also be adjusted to accommodate those level changes. And of course any new players to the game that did not make a character in Battle for Azeroth will all start off at level 1. Which will now take us to the next topic New Starting Experience, Exile's Reach. Exile's Reach is the newest area uh, that's going to be added for the uh, pre-patch. So anybody who's level 1, they're going to have the option of actually going out to Exile's Reach. And you hit about level 9 or 10 once you're out there. Now for new players that never played in Battle for Azeroth, their only option is going to be Exile's Reach. So upon logging into the game, after you create your brand new character, which is a level 1, you're going to be given this option. This screen's going to come up. Now for veteran players, which is players that have been playing in Battle for Azeroth and made characters there, you're going to have the option now of Exile's Reach or your race area. The starting area for your race so example given humans you would start off again in Northshire. I would advise picking Exiles Reach for all players because again this is going to be the newest content that we're going to be seeing now in the pre-patch and once you do pick Exiles Reach a cutscene is going to kick in where you're going to be on a boat and it's going to take you out to Exiles Reach and this goes for both factions. Exiles Reach is geared to be a tutorial for brand new players to World of Warcraft. So the quest kind of guides them as far as how to start off in this game. So you're just going to pick up all the quests that you come along while you're out here questing in Exiles Reach. Which should get you close to level 10 if not level 10. Once you complete most of all the quests, you're eventually going to get a quest to take you inside the Dark Maul Sinatel which is a dungeon which you're going to enter but you can be solo once you queue up for it. Uh, it's going to give you two NPCs that's going to escort you through this dungeon and at the end there's going to be these two bosses that you have to defeat and once you defeat them 
you're pretty much done now with Exile's Reach. Once you've completed and cleared the dungeon, you're going to now hand in the quest right outside of it. And then this is going to automatically kick in, and it's going to fly you now to your next location, and you're going to be exiting now Exile's Reach. For brand new players to the game, you're going to arrive now in Barless Harbor. For veteran players, you're going to arrive, if you're Alliance players, in the capital city of Stormwind. Orgama for the Horde. Next we have a new implement, which is pretty cool. They added in a new chat channel for new players. So this is called slash new player has joined the chat. And basically how this works is after creating your new character and beginning your journey into World of Warcraft for the first time, you'll automatically be added to a newcomer chat channel where you could talk to other new players and seek advice from experienced players of the same faction who will be your guides as you level through this new starting zone of Exile's Reach. Once that new player reaches level 20, this feature now, the newcomer chat, now goes away. Now, to become a guide, if you're an experienced or veteran player, you would have to go to your main capital city. So for the Horde, it'd be Orgama, and for the Alliance, it'd be Stormwind. And there will be a new NPC called a Guide Recruiter. But there is certain criteria that you have to meet, which we see right here. And those being, you must have an account in good standing. You must reach level 50 in the pre-patch. You must also have to complete 3,000 quests. I'm really not sure if those two are the retail game or the pre-patch, because to do 3,000 quests in the pre-patch, I don't know about that. We'll have to see about that once the pre-patch hits. And then the last requirement is that you must earn at least two of the following achievements. Terrific Trio, Rival, Battle of Azeroth Season 4, Battle of Azeroth Keystone Conqueror, Season 4, The Walking Dream, or we have the Technology. And then if you no longer wish to be a guide, you can speak to that guide recruiter again to opt out. Next on our list, we're going to be talking and looking at time walking campaigns. Players who have already experienced Battle of Azeroth and reached level 50 on at least one character can choose to level any subsequent characters in a different expansion using time walking. This new feature allows content from locations like Northrend or Pandaria to scale to a player's level. So once you reach level 10, you'll be able to experience and go through those old expansions again all the way to level 50 to experience the stories of these areas at their original attended pace. So again, this is not for new player accounts. New player accounts only have the option of Battle Fazeroth areas, which will also be scaled to their level. Now for both factions, that do have at least a level 50 on Battle of Azeroth, you're going to visit Chromi, which is located in the embassies in Stormwind or Ogama for the Horde. If you change your mind and like to level in a different expansion, just simply speak to Chromi again. Next on our list for the pre-patch is Recruit a Friend Updates. So this one, as we see right here, with the upcoming release of Shadowlands and the leveling adjustments, we're making a few changes to recruit a friend. Beginning with the release of the pre-expansion patch, characters who are created by a recruited friend will receive a unique 30-slot bag, the extra spacious knapsack, upon completing their adventure in Exile's Reach as a part of a new player experience. The additional experience boost that currently exists for recruited players and recruiters who parted together will be phased out before the launch of Shadowlands. All other rewards available with the Recruiter Friend program will continue to be available for recruiters. Now let's look at some PvP. Battle for Azeroth PvP Season 4 ends and the postseason begins. 
The gates will soon close on Battle of Azeroth PvP Season 4. With the release of the Shadowlands pre-expansion patch, don't worry though, you'll still be able to take part in competitive PvP in a special postseason, which will end with the launch of the expansion. The new Shadowlands Season 1 will then go live shortly after the launch of Shadowlands. If you participated in Season 4 to ensure that you receive the rewards that you are due, please keep in mind the following. Refrain from transferring your characters to another realm or faction until after Battle of Azeroth Season 4 has ended. Battle of Azeroth Season 4 titles and mounts will be rewarded approximately two weeks after the season ends. Once the pre-expansion patch is live, we'll be kicking off a special post-season that will last until the launch of Shadowlands. While placement on the season ladder, is locked for any end of season rewards such as the gladiator mount or title, players will be able to continue to earn conquests towards the conquest schedule and also gain random PvP loot and collect catch-up gear rewarded from strong boxes. Players will also be able to purchase corrupted gear from vendors located in Stormwind and Orgamon. Next, earning flight in Warlords of Drenna and Legions. With the release of the Shadowlands pre-expansion patch, flying in Warlords of Drenna and Legion will no longer require earning the achievements Drenna Pathfinder and Broken Islands Pathfinder, Part 2. So again, to get flying for these past few expansions, you are no longer required to do the long and drawn out achievement for Pathfinder. Next on our list is Recruiting Allied Races. Players who are seeking to recruit a new allied race to their side will no longer need to earn Exalted Reputation with their associated faction once the pre-expansion patch goes live. Players will still need to complete any achievements and story quests associated with the allied race to gain access, however. Alright folks, last on our list is a parents change service for Shadowlands retiring soon. I never even knew that they ever had this. With the release of the pre-expansion patch, players will be able to seek out a barbershop for a variety of character customization, including the ability to change a character's gender, hair, facial features, and more. Due to this upcoming new in-game option, the appearance change services for Shadowlands will be retired from the Blizzard Shop. So again, this is a Blizzard Shop service prior to the release of the pre-patch. Now we just need to hang tight and just wait for the announcement of the release of the pre-patch for Shadowlands. But I'm predicting it's going to be any day now. And again, I just have to make sure that everybody's clear on this. Do not expect to come in with the pre-patch and play Shadowlands itself. Again, the cap level is only level 50, and there will be no Shadowland content added yet in the pre-patch except for the Exile's Reach. Because once the actual Shadowlands does surface and hit, the new cap level will be level 60. And again, Shadowlands is due to release October 26th to the 27th, 2020. So thanks as always for stopping by and checking out Wise Game. I hope this information in today's video helped you. And feel free to sub up for more future content. Comment down below because we love to hear from you. Until then, you guys have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.